What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. And today I'm going to show you how to uh, disassemble the, the display or the dash on a 401 VIP pillin or spar pillin. I just can't, I can't deal with this thing no more. I mean, I mean, look, like, it's, it's just ridiculous. Like, I can't deal with that anymore. So I'll show you how to handle that. Um, first of all, you know, if you guys are liking what you're seeing, if you could, please throw a like out for me, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out a lot because it's a smaller channel. But uh, but anyways, guys, I appreciate you watching no matter what. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, let's get to it. Um, I know that uh, my issue is, I don't think I've, I've ever seen anybody else have the same issue that I have with just a ton of smudges on the inside of the glass, but uh, it's been pretty well documented that people have had issues with uh, moisture getting into the dash. So this process, this video will help people, um, you know, address that problem. I know there's some kind of O-ring in there. I'll go ahead and measure it for everybody so they can, uh, so it, it can help you out if that happens, if that unfortunately happens to your spar pillin or vip pillin. So here we go. And here's another close up of my display. You can see it kind of looks like, yes, I've tried to polish it and whatnot it, because it kind of looks like this is on the outside, but it, it's not, it's it's on the inside. You can see that there's clearly finger smudges and just a ton of scratches on the inside. How that happened, I have no idea, but uh, I, I I can't deal with it anymore. I mean, it looks, it looks ridiculous. So uh, anyways, guys, first thing that you're gonna do is we're gonna remove uh, this fastener and this one. Those are, they're seven millimeter and then that fastener and then that one there as well, it's it's an eight millimeter. Why Husqvarna didn't make it all seven millimeter, all eight millimeter, I have no idea, but yeah. Seven here and an eight millimeter there. All right guys, so first thing to be really careful of, the seven millimeter fasteners here, they look like this, and the, uh, the washer is actually separate, so if I can get the camera to focus. The washer is actually separate, so when you pull it out, make sure you don't lose that. The eight millimeter, there is no, there's no washer or anything like that, so you can just pull those straight out. Once you get all four of those fasteners out, just give the display a little bit of a tug, and you'll see it'll it'll break away, and you'll also see the headlight will kind of break away with it. And there we go, guys. The display is away from the the bike itself, and you can kind of see how it's held together. It's got these uh, aluminum inserts here. They go into that they go into that rubber grommet, which is here. Um, that eight millimeter bolt was going that way. Okay, so once you remove that, you're gonna feel a little bit of resistance, and all that is is just the the rubber grommet coming away from uh, this little uh, insert here, and that's on both sides. But it will come off. It doesn't take a ton of force, but you are going to have you are going to get some resistance there. Once you get the, the display all the way away from the bike, the plug is here, and you could and it actually will pull straight out. And the release is going to be this guy right here. And this display feels super light and cheap, but uh, but this is how you get it off. And here's the display on my workbench. Looks like there's just a few Phillips screws on the back. Three, it looks like number two uh, Phillips on the back. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, remove those. Okay, and once you get those three fasteners out, I don't see any other fasteners there, so it looks like we'll be able to pry it apart. I'm just going to use this wide blade nylon pry tool and see if we can uh, see if we can get it apart. It should, I don't see, oh yeah, there it goes. So it feels really tight, it feels like you're gonna break it, but once it starts moving, it's not too bad. So again, just make sure that those those three Phillips screws are out. Okay, and just keep going around it until it comes all the way out. Just a quick note, uh, here, 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 the, uh, there's actually a separate washer, so make sure you don't lose it. It's kind of stuck to the rubber, so it doesn't immediately come off, but make sure you do not 
lose that. It is a, they are separate pieces, but um, yeah, it looks like we're, we're almost there. I'm just gonna keep working. There it goes. I think if you just kind of work it slowly, I wouldn't use a flat blade screwdriver or anything like that. I would definitely use a specific pry tool like this one so you don't break the plastic. I mean, it's just judging by the weight of this thing, it's not super high quality. So I'll go ahead and keep at it. Just give me a second. Right, and there we go. It's all the way apart. I just had to keep going around it little by little with, uh, with this nylon tool here. And I, now I can kind of see what was holding it. So if you guys look close, hopefully the camera's focusing. Uh, there's like these little, it's got a little bit of a ridge here. This one too. It's got a little bit of a ridge there. And that's what uh, goes inside of these rubber grommets. And that's that resistance that you're, that you're feeling. So, and if we look, looks like I could take the, uh, the clear plastic part off if I just remove these Phillips here. I might need a number one Phillips for that, but one, two, three, looks like there's six of those. And once you remove all six of those screws, just a note, there's, I'm not sure what material this washer is, but it's not metal. It's like a fibrous, almost like a, almost like a gasket material almost. So just make sure you don't uh, lose that or break it when uh, taking it out. And once you have all six of those little Phillips head screws out, this whole thing will just come apart really easily. And I thought there was an O-ring in there, but I don't immediately see one. So give me a second, guys. Let me take a closer look. I know that there is some kind of coating on the inside of this screen here that you're pretty much not supposed to wipe with any chemicals, but I don't know how I'm going to get around that because this is scratched so bad. I'm gonna have to uh, to polish this in here for sure. It's it's pr I have no idea how that happened, but it's scratched bad so looks like i'm gonna lose my uh lose my coating on the inside no way around it i don't know what that coating is for i don't know if it's for uh like an anti anti-reflective coating or anti-fog thing or whatever i'm not sure but looks like i'm uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna lose mine if i want to um get rid of all these scratches but again as you can see i mean the scratches are just and smudges are just out of control but let's go ahead and get that fixed and real quick guys, don't, uh, when you remove the clear plastic screen part from the display, don't take it apart like I did with the clear plastic part facing down. Do it with the clear plastic part facing up. And the reason is if you do it the way I did, now all these little, all these little pins fell out. And these are for your, like your, your button selection. See how that works. So, I mean, not, not a huge deal, not the end of the world, but you can kind of see how these little pins, how they would engage with the, the backside of, of your button. So just to save you a little bit of time, uh, when you pull the, the glass part off, do it with, or the, the clear plastic part off, do it with uh, the clear plastic part facing upwards, not down. But anyways, here we can see what the display looks like. I know some people, uh, they like to change the polarity of the screen and stuff like that. Now would be the time to do that. I'm not going to, I know, when you change the polarity of the screen, it's a cool look. It gives it that uh, kind of 80s look to it. It's, it's neat, but you lose, it's not as bright during the day and I don't want to lose that functionality. It's already kind of hard to, uh, to read this display as it is, but here we go. And um, I know I promised you guys I would take a, try to measure the O-ring, but I see now, I think that's the O-ring in here. And I, I actually, I don't want to risk uh, breaking mine by having to pull it out. I thought it would um, come out a lot easier. I don't want to pry on it and uh, and rip mine, but it looks like there is some kind of O-ring in there. And then looking at how the display is constructed, right? We see, I mentioned earlier, my pins fell out because I 
you know, disassembled it in, in a way that uh, wasn't wasn't the best. But now we see that the pins are where they should be, and they actually have a pretty nice. It's got a nice tactile feel to it, right? It's much. It's a much better feel than when you actually push it with the uh, clear cover on, but. I see now why those buttons are so hard to push. If you look at how it's constructed, see these circular rings here? Okay, that's the, the rubber part. That's the soft part. That's the part that actually moves when, when you push the button. I'll show you. Well, it's kind of hard to see, but that's the only part that actually moves is just that center piece. I don't know if you guys could see that, but so when you go up top when you're sitting on the bike and you're trying to push the whole entire button right this whole entire square it's not going to engage this little pin it's not going to hit the button so what you need to do is you need to push right in the center right you guys could can you guys kind of see that right you can kind of see that little bit of give it is only in the very center of that button if you try to push the whole thing it's not going to do anything you gotta almost use the tip of your finger to push it. And again, you can kind of see how that works there. So that's an explanation for why our buttons are so damn hard to push. All right, so what I'm doing here, I just have a soft microfiber and uh, I started with some Atom Swirl and Haze Remover. That's, that's this stuff here on a uh, soft microfiber. And now I'm uh, using some fine machine polish to get those a little bit heavier scratches out. Once I'm done with this, I'll use some Menzerna uh, SF4000 Super Finish. This stuff works really, really well for uh, for giving you a pretty much perfect just glass finish. Get, get, gets rid of all the real fine scratches and everything. So I'll just keep going around until this thing looks the way I want it to. Okay guys, and there we go. So it's all polished up. It's certainly not, it's not perfect, but I mean, you can still see there's some scratches in there, but a lot of those are on the outside as well. Most of the ones on the inside have been addressed. Just one thing though, if you are going to do this, be very careful with these pins. Make sure that the rag, or if you're going to use one of those really small, um, like detail buffers, make sure you don't catch on any of these little posts because you will break them off. All right, so got it all nice and clean. Let's go ahead and put it back together just the same way that we took it apart. Pretty straightforward. Okay, and guys, since this is not a, it's not a serviceable item, so I don't know what the torque spec is supposed to be on these screws. They weren't very tight when I took them off. I would say just kind of go turn them until they stop. If you guys that have been working on cars or anything mechanical, bikes or whatever for a while, you'll kind of know what that feels like. The faster kind of just, it kind of just stops. I would just leave it at that, especially with that um, fibrous gasket that's on these screws. I'm just kind of go all the way around, go until they stop, and then that should be plenty of torque. Okay, guys, and there it is, all back together. Again, just make sure that we don't, you didn't forget these washers. There's supposed to be a washer here, 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 and then also here. If you look real close, the washers for these grommets are actually larger than the washers here. They are not all the same. So again, why does KTM Husqvarna keep using different size fasteners and washers for everything? I have no idea, but just a quick note. So let's go ahead and put it back on the bike. And there it is back together. Again, uh, seven millimeter here, eight millimeter there. Make sure you don't lose the washers. And one little tip I'll give everybody, it's really easy to pinch these wires here when you're trying to um, fasten the uh, the display to the, the triple tree. So just be really careful that you kind of 
push these out of the way as you're tightening that eight millimeter fastener. Be really careful. I, I don't know why they ran it like that, but um, it's super easy to, to pinch that wire. But anyways, there it is. So all together, as you can see, there's still some scratches here and there. A lot of those are on the outside. I haven't polished the outside yet, but um, all those crazy smudges on the inside are, are now gone. Yeah, one more thing, the fasteners, uh, the seven and eight millimeter fasteners that hold the display onto the bike, I elected to put a little bit of blue Vibratite on there. Uh, I didn't have any Loctite or thread locker on there to begin with, but uh, since I was in there anyway, and when I went to loosen them initially, they were they were pretty loose anyway. So I figured I'll put a little bit of Vibratite on there just to, to keep them from coming all the way out. But um, yeah, there we go. So just took, yeah, it took me about a, a couple hours to, uh, to do that. It does take some time. Just take your time. Uh, a lot of the fasteners are screwed into plastic and stuff like that. So you don't want to force anything. You don't want to over tighten anything. Uh, don't want to pinch any wires. Just take your time when you're doing this. But I hope this video was helpful for anybody who had the same problem I did or has the more common problem of condensation getting into the uh, into the display. But um, yeah, there we go, guys. So thank you so much for joining me. Again, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. But uh, we'll see you guys next time.